do now is we're going to measure the current being supplied from the battery to the load you've got. Now, don't wire anything up yet, we'll go through how we do this. Yeah. So, the first thing is, now we're going to measure current. So we can see the voltage you measured by putting the cables in parallel onto the battery. Um, so the voltmeter here is shown that it's on the positive and negative terminals of the battery, volts. Now, current, because it's like a flow of water, you actually have to look inside the pipe to know what's passing. So in that case, you have to know the like, voltage you can measure up to the top of the head, and then the current, you have to know what's flowing through the pipe. So you have to put this in line with the pipe or with the wire. So what you're going to have to do is first of all change to 10 amp DC range. So take the wire out, put it into 10 amps DC, and also click it onto 10 amps range. And it might take a few people here to, to wire this up, because we're not going to wire it up permanently. Um, oh, uh, we just have to move that to ten So amps. we Sorry. have to put... I'm just going to take that. You can turn it very soon. And so wait. now what we need to do is if you put, of your load, if you put the negative wire onto the negative of the battery and hold it there, uh, not to the multimeter, the actual load. Um, if you've got a light bulb, what do you think is the negative on that one? I'm just guessing well, no. black. The black. Um, generally it's black. A light bulb, generally um, incandescent light bulbs, it doesn't matter which way around it goes. So I know that those two, they can go either direction around, either way around. Certain things, oh, there are these are so these are fluorescent light bulbs. These do actually have to have positive and negative correctly applied. So we want to apply, um, we want to hold the, the, the black onto the negative. Be a little bit careful here, don't short circuit the thing. No, you put that's when you get a big bang. Which one you want to just try putting the other line on just to make sure your load works. So just try putting the positive. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we've got a light here. We've got a light, yeah. Right, light. If I put this on this and you put that on there, you'll need the spark or it'll work. Oh, Wait, yeah. no, 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 no. Okay. So we've got it's a few gotta be, It's got to become now, part of the circuit. Now, in the positive line, what I want you to do is put the multimeter on there. So one of the, the positive cable will go to one or other of the um, yeah, that should the work. leads yeah. from the multimeter, and the other one will go on to the positive of the battery, keeping the negative connected to the uh, to the battery. Yeah. So we need to, no, one second. Okay, so it's in line, it's in series with the battery, so it needs to go. Yeah, so these two need to be connected together. And what you're doing, this is in line, so it's flowing through. No, because they're all million. Back to the battery. That's resistance. Okay, so, that, so this should work. That yeah. should work. Uh, no, that's the, this is it. So what's happening, if you do it out, is. Maybe just. Um, so you're it's not pushing very hard from on the battery through the multimeter. So just like that drawing there, through <coughs> the ammeter. No. Through to the load and back here. Now it's not working, is it? Now some of them I do know. Some of these multimeters have been broken because what's happened is people have tried to measure voltage when they've left it on current range. And so these are unfused multimeters, so it's caused them to blow up. They still measure the voltage, but they don't work with the current. Is everyone getting a current? No. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Try it. Yeah. Really? What's happening here? Yeah. Okay. So. Let's try a multimeter that I think no works. Hey, you got it. Okay, the switch. So are you getting on the 10 amp range, but not on the smaller one? Okay, yeah. right. Um, yeah, we'll keep it on the 10 amp range. It's probably because it's over. What's the smallest of the? Yeah, it's 200, 200 milliamps, and you're taking probably about 500 milliamps. So it'll be over over voltage. Over. Can you just turn it on and just see what that does? Okay. Oh no, it's 50 milliamps, okay. Or well, maybe it's been broken. Are you getting anything at all? Okay, can you try this multimeter? Uh, yeah, that's right. Okay, just try that and see what happens. Oh, we're on. Um. Yep. Uh, yeah, you have to take, sorry, they've got little uh, covers on them, which stops them being uh, on that one to the match. 
Okay, so if, um, everyone on a piece of paper, if they could write down the current that they are, the load is using when it's switched on, zero. you're going to have to use that later. Uh, zero, we're going to have to use this multimeter and pass it around, I'm afraid. Um, can you just try that one with uh, and yeah, no. once you have you found anything? Is it working? Wait, it was. Working. It, was. Minus two words. it could be that that isn't pushed in. Oh, it actually works second. It went. It worked. It work. uh, okay, it's this. This. Okay. okay. So, if you want to write that number down, what's if you if you could write that number down, we're going to use that. Use that later. And you're also going to have to share that multimeter with the people behind you. Because, uh, oh no! Wait, we've got more. That's right. Can you just try that multimeter as well? Yeah, sure. Um, the ones that don't work, oh. can you just put to the side? Um, which one didn't work? Did you try swapping around so the current they flows the other way? Throw away to sanity. No. Because I think they had the black you, um, attached to the red. Uh, we're just yeah. touching it. So if, has everyone got a, a reading? So that is a reading of current, so hey. yeah. current is measured in amps, ampere. Yeah, that one's broken, definitely. Right, can I just take that one away? That one's broken. And you had a broken one as well, didn't you? Yeah, right, 9.74. Have a look. Let's have a look. I think actually everyone's got working on that. Don't have one. Yeah, okay, so don't... Okay, so I'm just going to triple check hours. this. Do not now always check the range of the multimeter before you measure anything. The problem, the reason that those have broken is because people have been thinking they're measuring voltage, but they've left it on the current range. And if you leave it on the current range, what you do is you short circuit the battery and the thing will blow up. Generally, there should be a fuse in a multimeter. I don't know why these ones don't, but if you just double and triple check that you have the range correct before you measure anything, or else you might lose some more multimeters in this practical session. I prefer not to do that. Okay, so. What was the voltage that we all got? 712.4. Okay, and what was the current? So you've got all different currents. You've all got different loads, they'll all be slightly different. What I'd like you to do is um, calculate the resistance of the load. So we know that V equals IR. I'm going to leave you to do a little bit of maths and figure out what R is in that equation. You know the voltage, you've just measured it. You know the current, you've just measured it. So you should be able to figure yeah, out what I that's not right. Current equals 0.5. R equals V over I. V. Oh, sorry. V yeah. equals IR. And yeah, then it's a weird one because that can go around either way. I don't really understand how it works. Um, so. I guess it was designed for like an AC loop. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's designed to replace a halogen AC halogen. Divide by, oh, so yeah, you're right. divide by um, I, so I, and think then you get R. Two sets, which it was. Rectified somehow inside. It looks quite good. Because you can put it around by the way, it still works. Maybe with the rectifier, that's not happening. Okay, so everyone got a resistance value? Yep. 62.5. And resistance is measured in ohms. Okay. Now, that value itself doesn't really tell us that much. I just want you to, wanted you to calculate um, a resistance value. What that value is, is it's kind of the effective resistance <coughs> that the load is. So if you had a resistor, a resistor of 62.5 ohms is exactly the same as this light bulb here. And I don't know what you've got. You've probably got a very high resistance here, 250 uh, uh, ohms, yeah. And you've probably got a low resistance here. 4.5 ohms. So things that take a lot of power have low have a low effective resistance because they take a very high current. So that's maybe where we come on to next, which is a low resistance. voltage, current, and power. Yeah. Yeah. So um, power is the rate at which work is done. So in these cases, they're all light bulbs, aren't they? So basically, you're converting electricity into light and uh, the power consumed is how much light power is being uh, put out. So what we can do is, for all of these different loads, we can calculate what the power would be. So this is the other equation that I always remember. Um, in a DC system, power equals voltage times current. V equals IV, V equals IR. That's what you need to know. So if you can all measure the power, if you can all calculate the power, that's what I did before. That's yeah. the load 
consumes. That would be interesting, and I'd like everyone to chat out what.